Hey everybody, Rob Connett, host of the WPTF Morning Show, and we have a special guest with us here today. His name is Carl Walkner. He is a musician, and he is a TikTok sensation. Thanks for having me on, mate. Of course, of course. So I, I came across your TikTok videos a couple weeks ago, and uh, I was just like, wow, this guy is super talented. Uh, just happened to reach out, and you were nice enough to respond to me, and uh, and here we are. So uh, I want to get to know you as well as possible. And I know, let's start from the very beginning, because I know you're from Australia, right? Yep. Yep. That's right. East Coast. And, and then you moved to, to Nashville? Yeah. We've been here like seven years, back and forth forever. But yeah, 20, 2011, we first came over and wrote songs and recorded and stuff. And yeah, the rest is history. It's crazy. Take me to the very beginning of, of your career, you know, doing music in Australia and, and what kind of led you to the decision to, to move to the U.S. Man, well, um, it's long. <laughs> the story, but the short version of it is, uh, I mean, I, I was in school and played in high school bands and stuff. And uh, the first gig I ever had was as a bass guitarist, only because I had a bass guitar amp and I was filling in for a guy who had a bass guitar. I was 15 and, Anyway, um, yeah, and then basically through school, we played in bands and we played at like birthdays and whatever. And then after school, uh, the band kind of, you know, one member moves and somebody else joins and then it splits up and then it's back and it's whatever. So uh, we used to play heaps of events. And anyway, um, I went to college. I studied um, or university. I studied to be a school teacher. I finished my degree and I'm um, a bachelor. And, uh, and during that time, I was like playing covers gigs at like local bars and stuff. And I was doing solo duo kind of thing. Um, then, yeah, then we moved, uh, moved to a place called Sunshine Coast. Uh, I met my wife and we moved to the Sunshine Coast and we just, uh, I just kind of focused more on music and, uh, and I had the, the career, the, the teaching <laughs> degree and, uh, and I never really did anything with it apart from just uh, be thankful that I went through that process and, and, and gained a, a bunch of skills through it. But but um, I consider myself more of a musician than anything else. And so I uh, started writing some more songs, playing bigger shows, touring. Um, and I was at a music festival, met a guy uh, in Australia, from, from Australia. He was living in Nashville and uh, kind of invited me over. Uh, Mike Flanders, he's my first producer. And we wrote some songs and I did a bunch of writing with other artists. My first trip, 2011, and um, just absolutely fell in love with the place. And uh, kind of more found my uh, my niche, if that, if that makes sense, over here. Um, Australia's got a a great but weird um, creative climate for musicians. It's just, I mean, it's a smaller country, I mean, in population. And so we're very influenced. Australia is very influenced by other creative elements, dance and music and film and TV and, and all that. So um, my style is kind of a mix of like, pop and country and r&b and triple a and like all of it whereas um at the time in australia you kind of you had to pick one of two <laughs> yeah. you know and then uh and it's just you know it just i just i just found my market a little more um to be more of a global market and more suited to the u.s so anyway um back and forth for a few years after that and then we just kind of decided to, to uh to just let's just go let's just go over and that doesn't mean we don't get to visit Australia and see family and stuff but um but yeah we've been here ever since I've just been kind of grinding and doing the musician thing like everybody else and and uh trying to trying to keep making it work and still am so yeah, yeah. And, and and checking out your TikTok videos and everything on social media it looks like you're you're just playing random bars and restaurants and food halls and anywhere that you can get in in Nashville and and show off your stuff yeah, so actually, believe it or not, I um, that's the only gig that I do in Nashville. So I used to do, I mean, I have definitely done all of those shows and I've played at every conceivable variation of a bar or a house or a festival or, a, you know, 15,000 people to like, I think the smallest show I ever did was six people. And it was, that was a full house at six. <laughs> As in like, that was everybody who was supposed to be there was there. So uh, a little was it, was uh, it like a, was it, a birthday party or, or what it was a it was a surprise birthday party in somebody's <laughs> kitchen and so we all literally hid in the kitchen pantry and uh and they came in and we came out and i played like a step oh in the kitchen 
so uh so i've done every variation of shows and i've, I've toured a lot and um and i still have a lot to go i feel like i'm at the start of my career even though i've been playing for 20 years but um but uh i, I tour a lot of play a lot of events and original shows and ticketed shows all over the us and australia and other countries but in nashville it's like i've boiled into this like perfect little situation where i used to play a lot of dive bars years ago and for the last few years and all over but this one place which is um the one that you're talking about the food hall uh assembly food hall it's a venue in nashville it's got all the kinds of food that you ever want and i i like food <laughs> so uh and it's just a it's just fantastic they're wonderful people they they look after me and i do my best to look after them with entertainment and it's kind of it's a show totally different to anything else because most of my shows there's a there's a decent level of off the cuff you know in in those shows being a live looping guy mash dongs and, and have a good time but but that specific show i made it a uh you can request any two songs people can just request any two songs and i have to mash those two songs up together it's like a it's a challenge more than anything it's a challenge show so um it's the only gig that i do like it and uh and all of my other shows i do you know corporate events and weddings and parties and house shows and all that sort of stuff but that one is my one gig in Nashville that I just get to jam out and play whatever, whatever people request, and we're kind of all in it together. So, yeah, I mean the journey's been pretty, pretty cool. But um, and and I and I foresee that that's going to keep going on because it's 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 almost like a, it's almost like a paid rehearsal, but it's so much better than that. You know, it's an actual it's an actual show, but it's different to everything else. You know, for those that have not seen your videos yet, and you mentioned looping, for those that do not understand what that is. I've kind of been explaining to to people that you kind of remind me of a very unique, kind of like Ed Sheeran. I mean, he's a one man yeah. band where yeah. he, you know, will start with the drums. All right, record that. And it's on a loop. And then you get a couple of uh, strings in there and a couple of rhythms. And you get that looped in and you, and you just, just kind of layer it. So it makes it sound like you are a band. And it's just yep. right there on the spot. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's actually there's pros and cons. Don't get me wrong, because every, you know most musicians have performed in a band. Um, I used to have a band. We we toured and played festivals and stuff in Australia, and um, and then I would also loop if I was playing a solo show. And um, and Ed is the guy. So many people still think that Ed Sheeran was the first person to do it, and that is the furthest thing from the truth <laughs> he was he was everybody every looper should be thankful for ed because i mean before ed i mean i was probably looping maybe five six seven years before ed sheeran kind of blew up and those that time uh a lot of other loopers might attest to this but that time nobody had a clue what you were doing unless you'd heard of katie tunstall or jarl bernhoft or I mean, looping's been around for like 30 or 40 years in different iterations. It's been around for a long time. But um, but yeah, I can attest to like those those years before Ed blew up, nobody had, people thought you were playing with backing tracks and stuff. So you really had to find ways of like showing the crowd or describing to the crowd what it exactly is. And for those people who don't know, looping is uh you'd think I'd have an elevator pitch exactly for what the, <laughs> what this thing is now, but but looping is recording something live on stage and it playing back and then you add into that recording so basically it's it's that's the loop so you you create a loop so you might beatbox and then you hit record you beatbox and then you hit play and that beatbox will just keep going and then you can add something on top of that you can add a guitar bit and then that'll play over the top of the beatbox and then you can add a bass line and you can add all these different things and you can go infinitely but then uh, like what I said, pros and cons. You know, pro it sounds it can sound huge if you do it right. If you have the rhythm and you have the skill to be able to, you know, decide what to play and put it in a nice spot that it just doesn't sound convoluted. But then it can also be a con, which a lot of um, amateur loopers run into is it's too chaotic. They bite off more than they can chew. Their timing is bad, and then they take fifteen minutes to set up a beat, and everybody's bored out of their brain. <laughs> you know. <laughs> So it's uh there's like like anything there's finesse you know and yeah. um it takes the cool thing I like oh sorry go I was gonna say it, it takes a lot of talent and you've you've proven that for sure oh thanks mate <laughs> the cool thing with uh loop
looping is we're foolish to think you can compete with the sonic traits of a band. You go to a live show and you got drums and bass and everything, and they can start or stop on a dime because you can't do that with looping. You have to build it. Um, but what you can do is there's only one guy on stage, one person on stage. And for me, there's no rehearsal. You, you don't have months and months of rehearsals to get that show perfect. The thing that you can do that bands can't do is twist on a dime or do a birthday shout out or mash a different song that somebody shouts out in the in the audience and and flip it and change the beat, change the bass. You know, so there's a choose your own adventure raw element to it that's never going to be perfect, but you can be so fluid with it, and it's just it's amazing. And I think people really respond to that um, to that spontaneity on stage. You know, if you're lost, you can learn. Because again, watching your videos on social media and, and you doing the whole looping thing and taking requests live right there and then in front of people, are, is there a specific genre or maybe a, a couple of artists where like someone, re you know, gives it to you and you're like, oh yeah, I got this, watch this. And you you just, it gets you excited more than uh, others? Yeah. What, like by a lot. Like that is, no musician doesn't feel that. No covers musician doesn't ever feel that everybody <laughs> has like like those handful of like like if you come up to me and ask for like uh if i'm playing a cover show if you ask for some like like black street or erica badu or like like i like i like country songs as well but for some some reason there's just something with an r&b groove i it's i know it's i'm gonna have a good i'm gonna have a good time playing this song like i just know that i'm gonna have a good time because there's space in that there's rhythmic choices in r&b whereas um other genres you know like more more punk or or rock kind of genres it's everybody needs to be on the grid there's no room for you to mess with the timing of things whereas r&b there's space for you to deliberately be late on that you know or you can deliberately like mess mess with that little little bass bit because there's space for you to do it and there's air in the song so i just love that yeah uh your video one of your videos on tiktok more than five million views and it was uh time after time right yeah and did you end up recording you you just recently released uh a yeah. version of that right like it's it's on spotify yep. and, and everything right it's a, an actual recording now Yep, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, we it was it was two weeks. It was like I dropped it two weeks after that video went crazy. Cause I just I mean, and it's just it's an acoustic version. I want to keep it as authentic as I can, but obviously I couldn't release the looped version of it, you know, because the first two minutes is me building the loop. But um, but that's just such a it's such a cool song. And I and I've only played it like maybe once or twice. And when that person requested it at the show. I'm like, I've played this before. Like I had to Google the lyrics real quick and kind of figure it out again. Like I was learning it for the first time, but it just reminds you what songs you, you temporarily forget about and, uh, and you can just fall back in love with. And it's just, a, it's just, there's so many great lines in that song and beautiful melodies. And I just, I'm so happy it was that song. There's so many songs it could have been that I just, it would have been great, but I'm so pumped that it was that song. You know, it's incredible too that you're just like, oh, I think I've played this before. Yeah, maybe once or twice. And now it blew up on social media and, and <laughs> you are doing a recording of it and releasing it. And that's just funny how how things can in this time and age and you know, with social media, it's just crazy how things can blow up just like that. Yeah, and it's funny you should mention that too, because I uh I mean I've been doing you know socials and I've been doing this for a while and I've got a decent YouTube channel that I that I post a lot of stuff on too and um, tiktok was kind of behind but i just kept throwing stuff up you know and i remember talking to my wife that night and saying i'm just going to do something like this song's seven and a half minutes long nobody's going to watch it like people are going to not even watch the first four seconds because the first like 10 seconds or whatever is just me figuring the lyrics out or going oh and talking to somebody in the crowd like it's not even a 
it's not a video that you would ever expect to do anything on TikTok. So I remember saying, it's going to tank, but it's fine. I just, I'm just going to try something. And then I wake up the next day with a million views. And it just, it blew my mind that something so long could actually do really well. But um, I think uh, the consensus is the the fact that people can see that it's, there's no hiding behind anything. There's no auto tune. There's no, like, I'm clearly, it's one take. <laughs> there's no smoke and mirrors, which you just seem to see a lot of on social media, you know? Um, is is people singing along to a song that they've actually recorded in the studio, and it sounds and looks great, but it's not live. So that there's no denying that that is live. You know, yeah. Uh, obviously, I see that you're in a studio right now. Uh, it, can we get a, a little taste of either that or or something else? Or yeah, you're on the spot. But I would I would love to to hear hear you do something right now if that's possible. Yeah, for sure. Let me grab. Uh... <laughs> Big guitar. <laughs> no, I'm gonna play an um I'll play an original. This is just a it's a beautiful song, it's called A Million Times. Uh I think it just kind of fits. It's about finding the people you love, the things you love, and the problems you love to solve and just doing those things over and over again. And uh and the reason I also want to play this song is because it's going to be just acoustic. I'm not looping this one, obviously. I haven't got everything plugged in and and stuff, but I don't usually play this song just acoustic, and it's kind of nice. So, um, yeah. All right. Here we go. Um, a million times. Let's go. I lost count of all the times that I wasted you of mine. But now you're standing here in front of me. I could get lost in the pitch with all the reasons I could list about how you and I were always meant to be. But I take a breath and take your hand, take your shoes off on the sand, walk to feet, the water that I will do. I look up to my surprise, the horizon in your eyes, and your eyes reflect forever back to me. There's a million little things about you. I give everything to never be without you. If you like the way I kissed you just before, I'll do it all again a million times more. Now I have all your attention. We can choose our own invention. Turn it away up to a land of you. Hey, hey, I'm no good and no good. You don't ever have to wonder. For the future, I'll be down and multiply. There's a million little things about you. I give anything to never be without you. In your life, the way I kissed you just before. I'll do it all again a million times or more. A million times or more. Do it all again, a million times, all again, a million times, all again, a million times, or more. Thanks. Woo Very nice. <laughs> Very nice. Thanks, Mike. Carl Walkner with us uh, here on the WPTF Morning Show. Uh, so you, you've mentioned that you've been doing this for a while now, uh, but you know, you're going viral on, on social media. I, I got to ask, what is the eventual goal for you in your career? Um, really good question. And it's refined every single day. But, uh, but today and most days lately, <laughs> it's just been continually playing shows until I cannot play any longer. Um, and, and just converting every one of those shows into more of an original, more unique and intimate show. 
So um, if, you know, some people people say, oh, Madison Square Garden and, and all the stuff. And don't get me wrong. I would love to do that. Um, but if and when I do that, um, I don't want it to be something that I'm not. You know, it has to be, it has to feel like it's an intimate performance. It has to feel like it's it's unique and nobody's getting the same show. So those people, that, those super fans that come to the, you know, every single show for five nights in a row in five different cities, you know, I want, if, if that happened, they would experience a different show every single time um, that they come and see me. And that's every bit for people listening as it is for myself. Because I feel like, uh, I mean, I, I know a lot of artists and things can get stagnant and stale and as as amazing as music is, you know, if you sing something for a million times, you, you start to, you know, it wears a little thin. So, uh, but but the end goal for me, is um is to just uh is to keep traveling, see all these kind of new places, and uh, and be able to bring my family with me, kind of be of a bit of a bit of a poster child for somebody to say, you know, you can be a father and a husband, and and uh, and still make it in the music industry. You don't have to throw away your dreams and your hopes and and stuff. And I'm I'm currently living that, and um and I feel like I'm a I'm a better father for it. I'm a better person for it. I've got stuff to lose. I've got stuff to live for. And um and I want my kids to see that I'm really. That I'm still very ambitious and uh, and I can follow through on all of those things. So, so my end goal is uh, is still going to be to play for six people in a kitchen, <laughs> you know, for a birthday. But it's also going to be, you know, to experience something like MCG or, you know, um, play a few amphitheaters and a few festivals and just keep keep all of those shows wild and different and um, and wonderful. You know, all right. How can we uh, how can we get you to Raleigh, North Carolina then? Uh, you just literally email and say, "Hey, this is the date I want," and I go, "Cool, let's put it in the calendar." <laughs> <laughs> if so, that's, uh, so that's that's about as easy as it gets. Yeah, it's, you know what? It's it's surprising how many people. I I play a lot of shows, a lot of house shows, and and I travel and being solo, live looping. I can literally uh, fly to Norway, play a show in Norway, like I did last year, and Spain and Australia and you know, North Carolina and California, wherever. So, um, but what's funny is everybody that just sends a DM on Insta or TikTok or just an email or whatever and says, oh, do you do an event and are you available at this date? I'm like, yeah, absolutely. That sounds great. Let's connect you. You know, I'll either book it or uh, my booking agent's there. We'll lock something in the calendar and it's done. And they're like, firstly, I didn't expect you to reply. <laughs> Secondly, I can't believe you're actually doing this. And thirdly, like, Two months ago, I emailed you out of the blue, wondering if you did this, and here you are at my house, and we're having an amazing time. And like, I'm just blown away that this happens. And I'm like, I'm blown away that things get more complicated than that. It doesn't have to, you know. And and that's the best thing about it. And you know, you get to meet a bunch of new people. And and to be honest, every single one of those shows start out as one show, and they always end indefinitely. Um, I I luck out and become the family musician and play at the grad party and the wedding and the corporate event and the whatever. And, and uh, a lot of those shows, I think, you know, music really brings people together and I'm just lucky to be, you know, a big part of that. So yeah, yeah let's go. I mean, that's how we set this up as well. It was just a simple, I, I came across your videos and I was like, oh, I'll shoot him a DM. Probably not going to respond. And you did like right away. I was, I was like, okay, all right. And there's, here we are. Uh, reconnect. You know why? It's because I care. I care about you, Rob. Thanks, man. <laughs> I appreciate you doing this. I'm independent. I'm an independent artist. And this is all we got, you know, as independent artists, all we have is people helping us out and, and reaching out and asking some questions. And here, here I am talking to you and and uh, and some a bunch of people hopefully listening, tuning in and, you know, find out more about my story and, and hopefully follow you guys more. So, you know, it's it's win-win, dude. I really yeah, appreciate absolutely. it. Absolutely. All right. So we're we're gonna we're gonna figure out a, a day that we can bring you to Raleigh, North Carolina. We're gonna bring you in studio. We're gonna put on a show for everyone in the triangle. Sounds great to me. I'll bring my golf clubs. <laughs> um it's we'll we'll make it we'll make a big day out of it. I'm <laughs> down, man. Cool. I'm down. Uh his name is Carl Lochner. You can follow him on Instagram and TikTok, Facebook, Twitter. I mean, you got everything on social media. Check out his YouTube channel, yeah, Spotify, Apple Music, all that. All of it. Yep. <laughs> All right. Carl, thanks so much, man. This has been awesome. This has been so much fun. Absolute pleasure, mate. Thanks so much for having me.